Hi, my name is Hannah Alcoser and I'm an undergraduate student studying animal science at the University of Georgia. Today in my presentation, I'm going to walk you through the calf gut development, specifically a portion of the gut known as the esophageal groove and its importance. First, I'm going to walk you through just the basics of the cattle gut. Cattle are known as ruminant animals and have a much different stomach organization than humans and some other livestock species. A ruminant gut is made up of four compartments. The rumen, which I have highlighted in purple, is the first compartment that the food will come into contact with. It is also the compartment where fermentation and the breakdown of fiber and other feeds occurs. It can hold up to 50 gallons of digested feed and contains billions of bacteria to help ferment and degrade feeds. Next is the reticulum. It is the second compartment and much smaller than the rumen. This compartment is used to catch large particles of feed to make sure they don't continue through the rest of the gut without being further broken down into smaller pieces. This is to allow for better digestion. The walls of the reticulum, as you can see in this picture, are composed of honeycomb-like patterns, which make it easier to be able to capture the larger particles. The next gut compartment I've highlighted in yellow is the omasum. In this compartment, water is squeezed out of the feeds by the book pages like folds, as you can see in this picture, so that the water can remain in the rumen instead of moving through the remainder of the gut. This compartment is also known as the Butcher's Bible. The final compartment is the avamasum, which I've highlighted in green. This compartment is referred to as the true stomach due to the low pH and enzymes secreted to digest the proteins in the feed, similar to human stomachs. This is the most important part of the calf's digestive tract for at least the first eight weeks of life. During this time, the rumen is still developing, and I will describe this in more detail in the next slide. When a calf is born, the rumen is pretty much non-functional, and the abomasum is the largest portion. During the first few weeks of life, the abomasum is about 70% of the entire calf's stomach, whereas the rumen is only about 25%. Also during these few, first few weeks of life, the rumen is slowly developing and growing in size until the mature size is reached when the rumen is about 70% and the abomasum is only 15%. Also during those first few weeks, since the rumen has not yet been fully developed, a muscle flap is formed. This is directing the milk or milk replacer the calf is consuming during this time directly to the abomasum to be digested properly. This muscle flap is known as the esophageal groove. In this image, you can see the esophageal groove is depicted by the blue arrow and the milk flow is indicated by the dotted line. With the help of the esophageal groove closure, the milk flow will go straight from the esophagus directly into the abomasum. Once the milk reaches the abomasum, the enzymes renin and pepsin are secreted. These enzymes cause the milk to curdle, similar to how cheese is made. This clotting action allows the milk to slow down in the digestion process, which then allows for a very steady release of nutrients throughout the gut and eventually into the bloodstream. If the esophageal groove does not form or retracts before the rumen is functional, the milk, as shown in this second picture, will deposit directly into the rumen. If this happens, microbial fermentation will occur and because the rumen is still not fully functional, the gases that are released from the fermentation will begin to accumulate in the rumen and reticulum instead of being released as a fully developed rumen knows to do. This accumulation of gases in the rumen is known as ruminal bloat and can be fatal in newborn calves due to a lack in ability to treat the bloat in a timely manner. The two main forms of milk or milk replacer feeding methods for calves is either through teat feeding or bucket feeding. It has been shown through much research that the usage of teats in any way while feeding milk during the first few weeks of life greatly improves the chances of proper esophageal groove formation. With the usage of a bucket, there is no stimulation of the suckling reflex that is seen in teat feeding, or if there is, 
the esophageal groove will typically relax by 12 weeks of age, whereas with teat feeding, the groove will remain until 16 weeks of age. The longer period of groove presence will decrease any risk of ruminal bloat. Overall, producers should lean towards feeding their milk replacer using a teat-ended feeder. The usage of teats stimulates the suckling reflex, which leads to an imperative muscle tunnel formation known as the esophageal groove, leading the milk through the calf's gut directly into the abomasum. Without this formation, the likelihood of the groove forming and closing properly is reduced and the risk of fatal ruminal bloat is increased. There are multiple different methods that can be used to feed such as personally holding the bottle for the calf to drink from, as seen in this picture. But if there is a shortage of labor, there are many different forms of bottle holders and also buckets with the teat end attached. Now you may be wondering, I just told you bucket feeding won't work. But as you can see in this picture, it's a bucket holding the milk, but there is a teat end applied. There has also been much research regarding whether a specific height is required for the optimal groove closure. But there has been no correlation, so as long as the teat is being utilized for the feed, there is no required height for the feeding mechanism. Thank you all for watching, and I hope I have taught you a little about the importance of proper calf feeding, along with calf gut development in regards to the esophageal groove.